Welcome to the Integration Host Getting Started tutorial. Here we'll try and get you creating integrations right away. We'll give you a foundation of the concepts and point you in the right direction to grow your skills. We'll start with the Integration Host client, which is loaded following the installation. I've already created my trial license and pasted in the code, and it's ready to begin. We won't stay on the screen too long though, as it doesn't offer us much until we've got some processes running. We'll therefore follow the instructions on the screen and right click on the panel on the left and select new to create a new workflow. This is the integration workflow designer, who will define the steps needed to achieve our goals. I'll take you through it by creating a couple of examples. We'll start with a simple conversion from an HL7 file to a CSV file. See this left panel here? This lists all the steps to be executed by your workflow. As this is a new workflow, it started us off with the first activity. In the centre panel, we see the details of the activity. The first activity always defines how the workflow is started and where it gets its data. By default, it's configured to receive a message over TCP, specifically using the MLLP protocol, which is the standard for HL7. If you expand the activity type dropdown, you'll see that there are many ways you could get your data such as reading from a database, or listening for HTTP or SOAP web service requests. But in this example, we'll select the directory scanner as we want to monitor the file system for incoming HL7 files. I'll start by giving the activity a helpful name, then change the directory that we can monitor to C colon backslash example1. That's where we'll place the HL7 files for processing. By default, you can see that we're going to be scanning our directory for any files with the extension HL7. We'll keep that as it suits our workflow. We'll configure it to keep monitoring this directory for new files, even after all files in it have been converted, and we'll have it delete the processed HL7 files as we go. The message type tells the system what type of data to expect. The default of HL7 suits us nicely, but you can see that there's an extensive list of data types available. Lastly, we provide a message template. A message template is an example of what the message will look like. It doesn't need to be real data, just something with the structure of the message you're expecting to receive. Its purpose is to guide you while mapping your data. Let me show you by pasting in an HL7 message that I copied from the HL7 soup editor samples. Look over here on the right, the bindings panel has been populated with the tree structure representing this message. Expanding the tree digs deeper into the data. We'll use this in the following steps to create our conversion, but first let's create the second step in our workflow. Adding a step is just a matter of clicking this button on the workflow panel and it drops down another activity. Just like with the preceding activity, we've got a default activity type, one that sends a message using TCP. Hitting the drop-down shows that we've got plenty of options when processing the data, such as writing it to a database, sending it to different types of web services, or even processing it with C-sharp code. But we'll be writing this data to a file, so we'll select the file writer. I'll give this activity a nice name. Following that, I'll configure a place to write the file while it's been constructed. Then, how many rows of data we want in the file. For a CSV, it's common to have many records in a single file, so a high number is suitable. But if you were writing to XML, for example, then you'd set this to one and have just a single record per file. Since our CSV files have multiple rows, we'll move it off to another directory once we've finished all the processing. This prevents the file being tampered with by another process until it's completely populated. I'll show you the effects of this shortly. Let's change the message type to CSV and set the message template. Before we change the message template though, I want to point out that by default an activity's message template is bound to the message received by the first activity. In other words, the message sent to the workflow will be the same fundamental message coming out. This is great when you need to rectify the data or forward it on verbatim, but we are going to convert it to an entirely different message type so we'll delete this binding and start from scratch. In activities beyond the first, the message template not only creates the message structure, but also it's used to construct the message going out. 
let me show you this by creating the CSV by dragging in the fields from the binding tree. I'll bring in the patient's ID number as well as their first name, last name, and their date of birth. Note that I'm just dragging the fields into the end of the message, and the system is helpfully putting in the commas for me. Each of the fields is now represented by variables that will change their value with each message. Variables are just values stored in memory that can be updated and used in the workflow. They can be inserted into the message in text using the dollar sign curly braces variable name syntax and will be replaced at runtime. We'll go into this further soon, but for now let's go ahead and run this workflow so you can see what I mean. I'll quickly change the name of the workflow from the default to example 1, converting HR7 to CSV, then click the save and close button. Here we are back in the integration host client. You can see now that the workflow has been added to the list of integrations and you can see here it's already running. So now we just need to provide it with data to try it out. I'll navigate to my example one folder and here you'll find I've prepared the samples directory where I've saved some HL7 samples to test with. Now all I need to do is copy this file from my clipboard and paste it into my processing folder. If you look at the client, you'll see that the count of the messages processed is shown in real time. I can keep pasting in the sample files over and over and it will continue to process them. Looking at the file system, you can see that it's still constructing the CSV. Remember our configuration stated that we'd have to have 5,000 rows before we shifted it to the outbound directory. We could keep pasting, but it's easier to just stop the workflow running by right clicking on it and selecting stop. It will now close off the construction file and shift it to the outbound directory, giving it a unique name. I can now open it up and see that we have indeed created our CSV file from the data. It's looking okay, but I can see a few problems here. I don't like that some of the names are all capitals, like Sarah Cam. These dates are almost unreadable in the HL7 date format. Let's go and fix these up. We'll use the message logs to diagnose the problem in little. Click on the refresh button to show you the current logs. You can see here a row representing each message that was processed by our workflow. At what time it was processed and how long it took. Clicking an item, you'll see it expands to show you each of the activities and the messages processed. You can also see the values of the variables. I'll search the logs for Sarah Camp and we'll see what went wrong with her. Okay, it seems our incoming data is a little bit inconsistent. Sure enough, her name is all in capitals. The date is in valid HL7 format, but that's no good for Excel. So let's double click on the integration and edit the workflow to fix these problems. Navigate to the second activity and locate our variables in the message template. A handy feature of variables is that they can easily be formatted by right clicking on them and selecting format. Dates are simple, I'll select my computer's short date format. Names are simple too, I'll select title casing for the patient's given name and then the McName format for their family name. McName formatting will make sure that names like McDonald get the capital D in the right place. It's similar to title casing, but just with magic. Let's save the workflow, start it back up, and drop another sample HL7 file into the processing directory. I'll stop the workflow again, and we can have a look at the data. Perfect, the names have the correct casing, and Excel even recognizes the dates as dates. If you head over to the HL7 Super Editor, you'll find your workflows under the Integrations tab. You can control the integration host from here, just like the client can. Create and edit workflows, start, stop, everything. Viewing the logs even shows the HL7 messages in the HL7 Super Editor, with all of its helpful validation and highlighting functionality making the message understandable. Hopefully this was all straightforward. In part two, we're going to edit this again and expand on some of the concepts. Really, you don't want to miss it. We keep adding more videos all the time, so if you want to be notified, click the subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube, why not give us a like? We'd be doing us a great favor. Thank you.